Hey, so the problem I've been having with this golf cart is it's not very easy to start. That is, when I step on the gas, it struggles for a while, and it takes a lot of fine-tuning to get the choke just right for it to finally catch and start. And in the last video, I cleaned the carburetor out because I thought that might be it. I thought it just, something was blocked up a little too much, and it was giving it difficult uh, idle conditions. Well, after cleaning the carb, it definitely runs better while it's running, but I'm still having the same issues with a rough start. And here's what I think is going on. This has a centrifugal clutch, like a snowmobile, where it's a continuously variable transmission. It's got two different pulleys, both with two faces on them, and they can expand or contract depending on how fast the vehicle's going, and that will make the belt either move out, making for the equivalent of a larger gear, uh, or move in, making for a smaller gear. So they really have an infinite combination of gear ratios. Instead of having a complicated transmission, there's only one or two gears in the gearbox and all the gearing is done here. Uh, the centrifugal clutch is located inside this bell assembly. And I think the issue is, I looked at another one of these online and uh, from the view of the motor there, this belt was laying perfectly in the center. And here you can tell it's rising, it's laying somewhere uh, in the gear ratio. So what's happening, I believe, here's a better view, it's not resting in the center, it's on the faces of that plate. And also on this side, you can see something similar. If you see that worn path, that's really the one spot that the gear, that the belt has been riding uh, inside these two face plates instead of all the way up and down. And what I think is happening is when I step on the gas, instead of the end, instead of the starter motor being dedicated to spinning the motor up to speed and letting it catch and start running, it's actually struggling to move the golf cart forward at a fairly slow speed, but nonetheless, it, it's having to propel the cart forward, which wears it down and gives me a lower idle speed. Ba basically, my starter is going a little bit too slow because it has to push the golf cart forward, and so it's not able to get the motor to fire nearly as easily, so the conditions have to be just about perfect as far as fuel ratio and temperature of the engine for it to catch. So I think that's my problem. So in this video, I'm going to rebuild that centrifugal clutch and see if I can address the problem. I bet it's just some kind of buildup inside, not allowing those uh, the clutch to move all the way in and out freely. So to get started, we jack the vehicle up, just like that, right on the rear differential because to get access to this nut right there, or that bolt on the end of the clutch, it's easiest to go in through the wheel well right there. And then to get the other one off, it's kind of hiding behind the tire. So we're gonna jack it up, remove this tire, and then I'm gonna use an air tool to, to bust everything loose. It's definitely nice to have an air tool for something like this. I highly recommend an impact gun. Right, pull her out. And you're going to want to remember which one goes where. This shorter one goes into uh, the back pulley and this longer one goes into the centrifugal clutch. Now I know you all have your special easy go clutch removal tool, right? Now I know. I broke down and bought this stupid thing off Amazon, paid way too much money for it, but didn't want to take the chance of stripping out the clutches because they are very expensive if you have to buy new clutches. And I would still have to get it off somehow if I stripped, stripped it out. So I didn't bother trying to make one with the bolts I had lying around. Though I've seen some people try that. I'm sure it could work, just wasn't willing to take the chance. <laughs> if you ask nicely and it doesn't work, that is when your impact gun and your at-home compressor doesn't have the power to get it started, 
you improvise. You know, this is why you all turned into the video in the first place, to see how somebody else got past this part. I just wedged a screwdriver in. Now it should come off the rest of the way with the impact. And we've got the drive clutch off. So it's in this top plate. part. I'm sure everything else will be insanely complicated. Most of the things I saw online show that you need a lot of specialized tools to take this clutch apart. But we won't be doing that. We will be fabricating something. I saw one kit online that has new clutch springs for both the drive and the driven clutch. And the springs are about 200 bucks, but the tools that come with it to take these things apart, it's about $2,000. That's more than I paid for this golf cart. So there's no way I'm gonna spend that on tools just to take the clutch apart. So I highly recommend getting a welder and you can just make your own tools. All right, with all the bolts off, let's see what that looks like under there. Okay, first thing I notice is there's an X right there. And there's also right there so I'm guessing that when you put this back in you want the X to line up over the X just be observant when you're taking stuff apart for the first time and then I don't know if you can tell but there is an excessive amount of corrosion mostly this is an aluminum casting so this has got to be all just salt buildup and it looks really bad so no wonder my clutch is sticking so now I've got to make a specialty tool that can fit into these grooves and Something else that'll hold the bottom still. And then uh, I think this is factory torqued at about 125 foot pounds. So I'm gonna have to get something fairly substantial to be able to hold this down, fit into those grooves and break it loose. So let's get fabricating. So let me show you what I'm doing. I took a piece of steel and I cut two three inch segments off of it. I sketched out where the grooves are on the back of this clutch plate and I found where three are properly aligned and I put this segment here on the center line of that one and this segment here there's room in the center for that central shaft to go through I sanded all the corners and now I'm going to weld this together and then once this is all together I'm going to put teeth on the other side that'll go into those slots on the back of the uh, on the back of the clutch and then we should have a top clutch plate removal tool and here's what I ended up coming up with reinforced on the back it's got the two prongs with a couple of other pieces of scrap metal welded to support each one of the joints it's got that hole in the middle there for the central shaft to go through and on the other side just welded bolts all three places. I'm actually quite proud of this. But that's the kind of thing you can do if you've got a welder. You can make all your own specialty tools and spend, instead of spending 2000 for them. So let's see how this works. For the bottom piece, I just put two, clamped two bolts into a vise and I took off the, uh, the pulley on the inside of this so that uh, more of the splines were exposed. Now, just set this right on, just like that, and then take our tool, that slides right in there, and <clears throat> there we go, broke it loose. Ah, 
That is pretty corroded. So I'm just going to clean this whole thing up with a Dremel with a little wire brush attachment. Because I don't want to scratch up this aluminum. Just want to get rid of the corrosion. Make sure all the wheels are round. Actually in pretty decent shape. Like I said, this cart hasn't been used that much. It just got used in salt water, so anything that can rust, rusted, and anything that can't, it's in good shape. Don't lose this washer. This is what it looks like all cleaned up. Can clean everything, just the channels that all the different roller bearings ride inside. And they're not perfectly tight clearance, so you don't have to have every bit of grit out of there. There's a good bit of wiggle room back and forth. And in these corner pieces, you'll see that the edges are chamfered anyway. So it doesn't really matter if you get all of that out. I just want these to roll nice and easily, and they do now. Put all these back in. And you want to make sure to clean out this bushing. Get any corrosion off the shaft here. The way up that you can. When I first took this apart, it was really bound up when it was all the way down like this. And now it spins freely and you can see the corrosion. Centrifugal force the way they're supposed to. Be. Before I put it back together, another thing I've decided to do is where these rubber bushings ride on this, uh, I don't know, on the sidewall here. I decided to sand those down as well. And I'm also, I had a suspicion that since, unlike rust, rust will sometimes expand, but sometimes it'll eat away at the surface so it leaves room for the rust to exist. But this type of buildup on the aluminum, the aluminum's fine. The buildup is on top of it. So I suspected that underneath these rubber pieces, it, there might have been some buildup that was pushing them in more, causing them to clamp tighter as they slide up and down here. And it is kind of difficult. It doesn't slide very well. It's a little bit stiff. See, it catches. And then... When I took one of them off, you can see there's quite a bit of buildup in there that's probably pushing it a little bit more closed than it would otherwise be. So I'm gonna clean these out as well and then put these pieces back on and then reinstall everything. Well, we got it all put back together. We'll snug it up using our homemade tool again. Just tighten it up. It's supposed to be torqued to about 125 foot-pounds, which ah, right about there. Just glides like a dream now, one-handed, no problem. What a difference that makes. Now to put that top cap back on, remember your X right there. Align it with the X on the top cap. I took apart the driven clutch as well, and this is what it looks like. 
the inner piece, it's got these rollers that are actually attached to the sidewall. Central shaft, there's a washer down there. And then the other side looks like this. This has already been cleaned up. I'm ready to put it all back on. First, go ahead and tighten up your leaf spring bolt that we had to loosen to get the drive clutch out. It's tight. Now tighten both of your clutches. I already started to thread the main bolts in. Maiden voyage. Let's see if this thing works the way it's supposed to. It already looks a million times better. This is how they're supposed to be with the belt riding all the way on this inner shaft so that it's not grabbing the sidewall at all. And you can see there's a little bit of light right there so it's not grabbing. Yeah, it's just on the center shaft and here it's all the way out at the largest gear ratio. See what happens when I step on the gas. Well, we're in so much better. I'm sure that's going to make an enormous difference when I go to drive it next. And uh, thanks for watching. That was how to rebuild a clutch without buying all the expensive one-time use tools that you would that would otherwise be required for this job. Please like it, subscribe. I'm always fixing something. Talk to you all some other time.